The prehistoric shark Megalodon and the early human ancestor Australopithecus are two of the most iconic creatures from Earth's ancient past. Megalodon, a massive predator of the seas, ruled the oceans during the Miocene and Pliocene epochs, while Australopithecus, an early genus of hominins, roamed the African landscapes during the same period. Though they inhabited vastly different environments, the overlap in their timelines raises intriguing possibilities. Did these two species ever interact or was their coexistence purely coincidental? The Existence of Megalodon and Australopithecus The prehistoric shark Megalodon existed from approximately 23 million years ago to as recently as 3.6 million years ago, making it one of the largest and most formidable predators of its time. This massive shark, which could reach lengths of up to 60 feet or more, was an apex predator in the world's oceans. Fossil evidence indicates that Megalodon's range was vast, encompassing most of the world's warm coastal and offshore waters. It preyed on large marine animals such as whales, dolphins, seals, and sea turtles, using its powerful jaws and enormous teeth, some of which measured over seven inches in length. On land, the genus Australopithecus emerged roughly four million years ago and existed until about two million years ago. Australopithecus species, including Australopithecus afarensis, the species to which the famous Lucy fossil belongs, were bipedal hominins that lived in the savannas and woodlands of eastern and southern Africa. While they were primarily land-dwelling creatures, they are believed to have had semi-aquatic abilities, such as wading or foraging in shallow waters, which could have brought them into proximity with coastal or riverine environments. Although these two species existed at different ends of the ecological spectrum, one ruling the ocean and the other thriving on land, their overlapping timelines and geographical proximity open up the possibility for interactions, particularly along coastal regions where the ocean meets the land. The coastal environments could have acted as a meeting ground. The geographical overlap of Megalodon and Australopithecus provides a plausible setting for interactions the coastal regions of East Africa. During the time Australopithecus thrived, the coastline of East Africa was not much different from today, providing a transitional zone where land animals could venture into the water and marine predators could swim close to shore. Fossil evidence indicates that Australopithecus species often lived near water sources, such as lakes, rivers, and coastal areas, which were crucial for their survival. This proximity to aquatic environments suggests that at times, Australopithecus may have encountered marine life, including the remnants of Megalodon's prey or even the shark itself. Given Megalodon's preference for warm, shallow waters, it is not inconceivable that these massive predators occasionally ventured near shorelines in search of food. As an apex predator, Megalodon would have hunted along coastal waters where its preferred prey, such as smaller whales or seals, might have congregated. Such coastal hunting grounds could have brought Megalodon close to river mouths, deltas, or even lagoons, where early hominins like Australopithecus might have ventured for foraging or to access fresh water. The idea that Megalodon and Australopithecus may have interacted raises several questions. What kind of interactions could have occurred between a giant marine predator and a small bipedal hominin? While direct fossil evidence of interactions between the two is non-existent, given that they occupied such different habitats, Speculative scenarios based on ecological and behavioral patterns provide some insight. Given that Australopithecus likely relied on water sources for hydration and foraging, it is plausible that they occasionally ventured close to the shorelines of the ancient seas. These early humans may have scavenged along the beaches for marine resources such as shellfish, crustaceans, or even carcasses washed ashore. This activity could have brought them into proximity with Megalodon, particularly if a feeding site, such as a beached whale carcass, attracted both the shark and other scavengers, including Australopithecus. While it is unlikely that Megalodon would have actively hunted hominins like Australopithecus, encounters could have occurred if hominins ventured into the water to wade or forage. Megalodon's massive size and preference for larger prey suggest that it would not have specifically targeted small hominins, However, if an Australopithecus individual were to swim or wade in a river mouth or lagoon, they could have been perceived as vulnerable prey. In this speculative scenario, an unfortunate early human could have fallen victim to an opportunistic megalodon, 
reinforcing the dangers of coastal or aquatic environments for these early hominins. Alternatively, Australopithecus may have been scavengers of Megalodon's leftovers. As an apex predator, Megalodon would have left behind large amounts of carrion in the form of whale or other marine animal carcasses. These remains might have washed ashore, providing a valuable food source for early hominins. If Australopithecus stumbled upon such a carcass, it could have provided a rich, nutrient-dense source of food that supplemented their diet of fruits, nuts, and smaller animals. Even if direct interactions between Megalodon and Australopithecus were rare, the presence of such a formidable predator could have shaped the behavior and survival strategies of early hominins living near coastal regions. The knowledge of potential dangers lurking in nearby waters may have influenced how Australopithecus interacted with aquatic environments. The need for caution while wading or foraging along the shoreline would have been an essential survival trait. This awareness of marine threats could have shaped the development of early hominins' avoidance behaviors, possibly influencing their migration patterns or foraging practices. The presence of Megalodon could also have played a role in the evolution of social cooperation within Australopithecus groups. Working together in groups would have allowed them to be more vigilant against potential threats, whether they came from terrestrial predators like big cats or, hypothetically, from massive marine predators like Megalodon. Early warning signals and coordinated foraging along coastlines could have been adaptive strategies that developed as a result of their coexistence with these large predators. Megalodon's extinction. As the Miocene epoch transitioned into the Pliocene, the Earth underwent significant climatic and ecological changes that ultimately impacted many species, including the mighty Megalodon. By this time, Australopithecus had already emerged and begun adapting to its environment. However, Megalodon faced mounting challenges that would eventually lead to its extinction. The decline of Megalodon highlights how even the most formidable predators can be vulnerable to environmental changes and disruptions in the food chain. The decline of Megalodon was not an abrupt event, but rather a gradual process linked to Earth's changing climate and shifting ecosystems. Around 3.6 million years ago, Earth's climate began to cool, marking the onset of the Pliocene epoch. This cooling trend caused a decline in global sea levels as ice sheets expanded, altering marine environments in ways that significantly impacted Megalodon's survival. Megalodon thrived in warm, shallow seas where it could hunt large marine animals such as whales, seals, and sea turtles. However, as temperatures dropped, these warm coastal habitats shrank, pushing marine life, including Megalodon's prey, further offshore or into cooler waters less accessible to the massive shark. The expansion of polar ice caps and subsequent drop in sea levels reduced the overall habitat available for Megalodon, confining it to smaller regions and limiting its ability to roam and hunt effectively. In addition to the loss of habitat, the cooling climate also led to changes in ocean currents and the distribution of nutrients, which disrupted marine ecosystems on a broader scale. As water temperatures dropped, many species that formed the base of marine food webs, such as plankton, also experienced declines, affecting the availability of prey for larger marine animals. This cascading effect likely impacted the marine mammals that Megalodon relied upon as a primary food source. With its preferred prey populations dwindling or migrating to less accessible regions, Megalodon found it increasingly difficult to sustain its enormous size and energy requirements. As Megalodon faced environmental and ecological challenges, new and more specialized predators began to emerge and compete for similar food resources. One such competitor was the great white shark, which, while much smaller than Megalodon, was highly adaptable. Great white sharks thrived in cooler waters and were better suited to hunt smaller marine mammals and fish, which became more abundant as the larger whales that Megalodon preyed upon declined. The rise of these smaller agile predators put additional pressure on Megalodon, whereas Megalodon was adapted to hunt large prey in warm coastal waters. The great white and other similar species thrived in the cooler, changing seas. The evolution of such specialized predators highlights how ecological niches can shift in response to environmental pressures, and in this case, it left Megalodon at a disadvantage. 
Unable to adapt quickly enough to the cooling oceans and the shifting availability of prey, Megalodon was slowly outcompeted and marginalized in the ecosystem. The extinction of Megalodon was a drawn-out process that spanned several hundred thousand years, coinciding with the climatic shifts of the Pliocene epoch. The combination of shrinking habitats, declining prey populations, and competition from emerging predators eventually led to the giant shark's downfall. In many ways, the disappearance of marine giants like Megalodon and the subsequent shifts in ecosystems may have indirectly supported the evolutionary path of hominins, setting the stage for the eventual rise of the genus Homo and the spread of humans across the globe. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.